out and touch the Lord as He passes by. You find He's not too busy to hear your cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out. This evening, let's take our Bibles and turn in the Old Testament to the book of Psalms, Psalm 59, unshaken trust in God. We're going to see David's unshaken trust in his God in a very difficult circumstance, Psalm 59. We're going to look at the Psalm and we're going to look at the backstory behind it. It's, uh, we see in our heading here that David has written this song mm -hmm. and he has set it to one of his favorite tunes, do not destroy. And it was written when he was uh, in a very difficult spot, as he was many times. And in this particular case, it was rather unusual. He was uh, actually in his house with his wife, and um, David was there, and his father-in-law, Saul, the king, sent men to kill David. That kind of gives you a new meaning about in-laws and problems, right? You think you have trouble with your in-laws, but is your father-in-law trying to kill you? Well, it was the case with David. They watched the house in order to kill him. And we're going to see how God got him out of that scrape, as he did so many others. Uh, so let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get into God's word. Gracious Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to hear your word today. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit would come and teach us through these words. Come, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We ask these things in your name, Father. Amen. Amen and amen. David was not quite king yet. Three years in the future, he would become king of Judah. But uh, he was just a young man, and he uh, was about 27 years of age at this time. And he is uh, married to the king's daughter because he's been such a valiant, valiant uh, soldier. And uh, they, Saul is trying to kill him because of jealousy. Oh, how jealousy uh, motivates so many evil, evil acts. Jealous of land. I want your land, Russia says, and goes after Ukraine. Or, I, I want your job. And we do all we can to unseat somebody at work. Uh, or we try to steal other people's sheep if we're a pastor or what have you. Uh, it goes on and on. Jealousy. Jealousy in the family. Uh, we see it with siblings, and, and when they get married, sometimes you're, you know, you're, you're jealous you don't like the spouse that, that your sibling married, and on it goes. It's crazy. Well, let's see, let's read the psalm and realize that God had delivered him, and then get back and look at the actual details. Um, and let's pick it up with verse 1 of Psalm 59. Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. For look, they lie in wait for my life. The mighty gather against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Awake to help me, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. At evening they return, they growl like a dog, and go around all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, who hears? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O Lord, his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips. Let them even be taken in their pride, and for the cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath. Consume them, that they may not be. And let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And at evening they return, they growl like a dog, and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food and hell if they are not satisfied. 
But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my defense, my God of mercy. Powerful, powerful psalm. David was anointed by Samuel to be king of Israel when he was only 16 years old. He killed Goliath at about that same age. And uh, now it's 11 years later. And all he did to Saul was love him. Minister, wrote, wrote psalms, sang, drove evil spirits from Saul, but Saul became more and more jealous. Uh, Saul's son, Jonathan, loved David, and they were very, very close. And Jonathan had to tip David off that my father wants to kill you. Uh, David sensed it, but he needed that confirmation. So here he is to be king over Israel, and he's been waiting 11 years. He's 27 years old, and uh, he's married to the king's daughter. You'd think all would be well, and yet the king is trying to kill him. We're going to break this psalm down in a little more detail, but let's go to the backstory. It's very, very interesting, and uh, your Bible probably tells you exactly where it is. Good to read the notes. Uh, it's 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 11. 1 Samuel 19 and verse 11. Again, Saul is resenting David. We see that in chapter uh, 18. He's jealous because David is such a successful warrior. He has God on his side. Uh, he has, uh, Saul is in the song, has slain his thousands, meaning the Philistines, but David his ten thousands, much more successful. Everyone is talking about David, and that's just inflaming the jealousy of Saul all the more. So Saul begins to persecute him, or continues to persecute him in chapter 19. And uh, let's pick it up with um, um, the fact that here he is. Let's uh, get a little fl a flavor of what's been going on. Um, it says here, there was verse 8. Let's pick it up with verse 8 of chapter 19, honey. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing music with his hand. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. So here David goes out, represents the king, represents Israel, has a tremendous victory over the enemy, the Philistines. Is Saul happy? No. Because jealousy is about the darkest of all of the sins of pride. And uh, he just can't uh, get him off his mind. This man's going to take my place. If Saul knew it, he admitted it later on, he knew it, that David was God's choice. And that just made him all the more jealous. Instead of trying to please God, Saul just turned uh, against God and against David. And here's David ministering to him. He's ministering sweet praise in his presence to drive that distressing spirit away. But Saul takes that spear and just tries to kill him right there in the, uh, in the hall of the king. And he escapes that night. And uh, I imagine that must have shaken David. Uh, he was a warrior, but still when a spear is thrown at you, that, that makes you uh, uneasy. But all the more that here's the man he loved. He loved Saul. He loved ministering. This was his first major ministry other than tending the sheep of his family. And here he's ministering to the king, and the king wants to kill him. How sad. Well, let's pick it up with our message for tonight. What's going on? Verse 11. Saul also sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning. And Michal, David's wife, told him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michal let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michal took an image and laid it on the bed, put a cover of a goat's hair for his head, and covered it with clothes. So when Saul sent mass messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers back to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may kill him. And when the messengers had come in, there was the image in the bed with a cover of goat's hair for his head. Then Saul said to Michal, Why have you deceived me like this and sent my enemy away so that he has escaped? And Michal, Michal answered Saul. He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? So that's the basis for this song. 
about uh, they're all against me, they're out there like wild dogs trying to devour me. Uh, I appreciate the fact that David was not specific in his songs because we can apply it to our situation. If it was too specific, I would have to say, I don't have that problem. My father-in-law is not trying to kill me, so I don't really identify with what he's saying. But the Psalms are generic, and they can be applied to any situation in your life. Anybody who's against you, including Satan, including disease or what have you. Well, uh, at that occasion, Michael saved her husband, or Michal, whatever the pronunciation is. And, and incidentally, as far I as I think the you say it right, but no, you know. as far as the, for the pronunciation, my Jewish father said this: "Say it any way you want." And if somebody objects to it, you say, "In my village, that's how we pronounce it." And I have so. to tell you something funny. Um, we, uh, Charlotte named her one of her little bunnies today. Mikal, so oh, that's sweet. where I'm getting that. <laughs> My advice on how to pronounce Old Testament names or any names, pronounce them quickly. For amusement, listen to some of my old teachings on the radio or here, and you'll see within three or four minutes, I will pronounce the same word four or five times. I'm bound to get it right if I keep pronouncing it one way or the other. But again, in my village, that's how we pronounce it. So uh, in any event, uh, this is what has caused him to realize that, that I've got enemies out there, but I'm not going to be uh, dwelling on that. I'm going to dwell on the Lord and call on his deliverance. Incidentally, just see how God is on David's side. For the rest of this story, not encompassed in this psalm, but to let you know the rest of this, I find this very interesting, actually amusing, beginning in verse 19. Now it was told Saul, saying, Take note, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the group of prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as leader over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they pro also prophesied. And when Saul was told, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. <laughs> then he also went to Ramah and came to the great wall that is at Sikha. Um, uh, so he asked and said, where are Samuel and David? And someone said, indeed, they are at Naoth in Ramah. So he went there to Naoth and Rama. Then the Spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Rama. And he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Therefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? So there's a man who's bent on killing David and coming against the work of God. Is God powerful? The Holy Spirit comes upon all of his messengers and causes them to prophesy, cause, causes Saul to prophesy, and he lays naked all day long prophesying. Lord, do that to Vladimir Putin as well. Prophesy naked on television for all the world to see. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Don't mess with God. If these guys are getting away with murder for a while, it's only for a short time. Our God is sovereign. If he can do that to the king of Israel, he can do that to the, uh, the monarchs and oligarchs and, and all the arcs out there, for sure. Just a cute story of the background of what happens when you come against God's man. Touch not the anointed of God. Do my prophets no harm. So let's look at the psalm. He knows that God is going to deal with the wicked. He knows that God is going to deliver him. Psalm 59, verses 1 to 5. Deliver me from my enemies. Let's read that again, dear. Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. For look, they lie in wait for my life. The mighty gather against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Awake to me, wake to help me, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. So he says, verse 1, deliver me from my enemies, O my God. He knows he has enemies, he has big enemies. When the king of Israel is against you, the nation is against you. We're going to see that, that he has to flee from Israel to go to the Philistines, and they're against him as well because he's been killing the Philistines. He has no place to go except the Lord. 
Perhaps you're in that situation as well. You have no place to go. You're between a rock and a hard place. But when you know you have the Lord, that's where you go. You deliver me from my enemies, oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. And uh, literally that means set me on high. There are several words in this passage that talk about set me on a high place, on a cliff where I have the advantage of height and protection. Nice. And so defend me, Lord. Lift me up over my enemies. Lift me over COVID. Lift me over that person at work who is bad-mouthing me, uh, that enemy of mine who's trying to destroy me. Lift me above Satan and all of his minions, high on that cliff. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Verse 2, deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. You see how that generic phraseology lifts us up? If he just said, deliver me from Saul, he's trying to pin me down, he's jealous because I'm going to be king. Uh, I couldn't identify with that so well. But this is very generic and it could be any enemy and any bloodthirsty person. We all have enemies out there. We don't even realize it sometimes. But they're out there because they're jealous. Verse 3, for look, they lie and wait for my life. The mighty gather against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Now, there's sometimes that you and I do wrong and people come against us, mm-hmm. and maybe in a sense we deserve what we get. Mm-hmm. But many times we've done nothing wrong, and people still come against us. We don't understand why, but God understands why. Mm-hmm. And the important thing is not why, but who. Who do you go to when they come against you? The Lord. You go to the Lord. We run to the Lord. Absolutely. And hide in him. Lift me up, Lord. Lift me up above all of this. Amen. And so awake to help me, verse 5, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations or the Gentiles or the Goyim. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. So Lord, don't give them any mercy. And uh, then the word selah is, I think, very helpful to us, even though it's not in the song. It's apparently an instruction to pause. And I, I like the, the songs of Israel. Unlike our songs, we just go from, from verse to verse to verse to verse, and then we sit down. But here they, they pause, they think, they just relax, think about what we just sang. And then we go on a little bit further. So this first passage here is, deliver me from my enemies, Lord. No matter what your enemy is, God will deliver you. He'll set you on high. I think in terms of birds, and I think about chickens. And so much of the time we're like chickens. We're just battling people, pecking here on the ground. I'd rather be an eagle. Just rise above all of it and soar in the heights. I love the stories about eagles. Yes. And, and how they can soar above all, even above the weather sometimes. Mm-hmm. And uh, be, be like an eagle. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like, uh, with wings like chickens. No, like, like e- eagles. So what happens like when eagle. you have wings like eagles? Oh, that, have you ever seen an eagle, how oh, big they are? And they're, they're, you see them flapping, flapping, flapping? And no, maybe a no. baby eaglet, but no, they just soar. They just soar like mm-hmm. that, high above the problem. Be like that as well. Be that as well. We and, know, I mean, because we're always watching. We have a Yorkie. So. Yeah, there are other birds. <laughs> the eagles don't bother the Yorkie, but we, we find some hawks around the backyard. We have a little Yorkie that's only, well, you see her, three pounds. And she's so right um, they draw birds. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but they look like little bunny rabbits. Yeah. So I always have to have her in a leash in the yard. Uh, she's very obedient. She would come. But if she runs down, and we have a big yard, and all of a sudden we see, we've, you know, we've seen the hawks, and actually we've seen the hawks pick up a squirrel, bunny, so they wa- and they can see from miles away. They can. Miles away. And that's the advantage of their height. The hawk, the eagle, uh, they can see for miles and mm-hmm. miles. Chickens, how far can they see? A couple of feet, maybe? Right. So let's, let's stop being chickens. We, we, we're nearsighted. We're, we're just pecking away. We're dirty. Uh, we need to see far off, and we need to see over. That's right. And beep. Yeah. And not to get too graphic, but the chickens, they, they, they walk in the stuff, right? All the doo-doo and all. Uh, the eagles, no, they, they don't. They just rise above all of that, in, but including the wicked atmosphere in which we live with all the pollution. They can just rise above it all. Be like an eagle. And uh, for extra credit, go home and study about the eagle and see why God says we shall rise up like eagles. So they that wait on the Lord shall they renew that wait upon strength. the Lord. That, yeah, that's, find uh, that. Well, can you find that? Well, let's see. Is that Isaiah 54, is it? Let's check You're that the uh, expert. Not you really. Buy it right away. Not really. Let's see if there's a... 
Let's see if that's, um, where is that? Wait, it's in Isaiah. Uh, we'll have to dig that out. Um, someone who has, uh, no, that's not the scripture I'm thinking about. It's in Isaiah. For extra credit, dig it out and you can shout that out. <laughs> Christopher can dig it out. Put it on your phone, Christopher. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. That's right. He's our, uh, he's our biblical eagle scout here. So let's go on. When you get it, uh, shout it out to us, Chris, and we'll just keep on going here. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I got all you digging on your phones now and in your Bibles. And that's the way it should be. And that's where we want to run to. That's where we want to get our sustenance. We want to get our breath. We want to mm -hmm. get our life. We want to get our, want our blood flowing. Our, we, everyone, we, we, so many times people look to, oh, I know I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. They look to their doctors and they look to all this other stuff. And I'll tell you, through this whole thing, I have just really fallen on Jesus. And now I'm seeing we really need to, yeah, I looked to Lord before, but I looked to a lot of other things too. Mm -hmm. Now I'm really just looking to the Lord, right? Amen. Just looking to the Lord because he is our deliverer. He can give us all that we need. That's right. Thinking about this perspective of chickens and, uh, and eagles, how about praying this? Lord, I'm having trouble with somebody, and I'm seeing that person like a chicken. I'm right there, nose to nose, pecking, and I can't talk to that person. We're arguing with each other, and I'm just right in the filth with that individual. Lord, I want to be like an eagle. I want to see this person through your perspective. I want to rise high above and see this person in Christ and what you want to do in that person's life and see what you want to do in our situation. I'm tired of being a chicken. I want to be an eagle. All right, somebody have that scripture for us yet? Go ahead, Chris. Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. And here you are in summer school and I'm still making you work, right? How about that? 40 and verse 31. Uh, I got the, I'm in Psalms here. <laughs> Let's go to Isaiah 40 and verse 31. Write that down, everybody, including those at home. Um, it says here, let's go back... Um, Verse 31, sweetie. Sure. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. Make that your scripture for this week. I want to be like an eagle. So what do we have to do to be like an eagle? We have to get high above the situation, which means we have to be in Jesus. Because he's the eagle. He's high above all of the situation. He's high and sits low. My mother used to say that. He's high and sits low. Uh, he tells us in Ephesians 2 that we are seated in heavenly places with him. That's Amen. pretty high. So Lord, I need to get into the heavenly perspective and see that I'm just pecking like a chicken with this individual here and I'm getting frustrated and uh, I'm getting no place. And again, not to be too graphic, but when you're down there in the, in the chicken coop and all the feathers are flying and it does kind of smell down there, uh, Lord, this whole situation is smelling. I want to get up in the clear air, see the perspective, the divine perspective and move on with my life. And, and, and if you've done something wrong, repent of it. Go ask for forgiveness and get out of the situation. Of uh, don't No condemnation in Christ Jesus. Rise above it and pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start over again. That's right. My mother used to say, when you're in a tough situation, ask, number one, what's the lesson I'm supposed to learn? I don't want to stay in this class. Oh, I love the fifth grade. I want to be in the fifth grade forever. Forget no. it. The sixth grade, forget it. That's you right. Know, school is wonderful in the rearview mirror. But who wants to stay in school forever? Right. Unless you're lazy and don't want to go out and get a job. Well, That's right. another story. Yeah, right, right, right. But, uh, but come on. It, it's, you're going to stay in that school over and over and over until you learn that lesson. Right. In school, if you don't pass the test, what do you do? You stay behind. Yes. So so that's Lord, what happened to Moses. Yeah. They kept going around. That's right. And around, around, around Mount Sinai. And, around. and they, they did. They just kept going around that mountain for a couple of years. When I first got saved, there was a song saying, what? Take another lap around Mount Sinai until you learn your lesson well. Come on, guys. Let's move on. All right. So he's learning his lesson, and he's looking to the Lord. All right. Now he gets into the second section, verses 6 to 10. And he's concentrating on God, not the enemies. And hey, your father-in-law wants to kill you? and you're looking to God, that's pretty good. 
You are my strength and fortress. Verses 6 to 10. At evening they return, they growl like a dog, and go all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, Who hears? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O Lord, his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Yes. He says, at evening they return, they growl like a dog. And that's the way the threatenings are. There's an awful lot of threatening today. And I'm not trying to belittle this. We appreciate uh, our president and China appreciates their president. And they're on the phone and they're rattling their spears. And uh, there's only one China, says Zhao Xiping. And, uh, and, I, and, I missed uh, all and, and Biden is saying, we recognize Taiwan. And we are, we are the world leaders in the power there. Unless God just snuffs them out and moves them on out. So th th this is man, how prideful and mighty we are. But God is the one who's really in control. And these are just dogs in the street, growling like dogs, going around the city, belching with their mouth, swords in their lips. They say, who hears? Who hears? Does Xiao Xi Ping hear from God? Does he go to Jesus and ask for guidance? Does Biden go for guidance with the Lord? God alone knows their hearts for sure. But are Putin and all these guys? Oh, they think they're so full of themselves. But God is the one who's in control. Keep your eyes on him. And while I'm pointing fingers to those guys, fingers are coming back to me because I think I'm in control a lot of times. And I'm making decisions. And I'm going to do this. And I'm not going to do that. Shame on all of us. We should be on our faces before God the way David did and say, Lord, you are my deliverer. Verse 8, you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Do you think God's laughing at these leaders? Oh, I would suspect he is. I would say he's having a good laughter. One of the reasons I want to get to heaven is I want to have a more humor than I have down here. I want to have nice, clean humor, and I think it's going to be a great comedy show. I've never heard that preached before. You tell me I, I have a lot of be, humor sometimes. You, you do, you do. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a comedy show up there. I think the Lord's going to say, hey, look at this guy named Putin here, and he thinks he is the boss, and look at Xi Jinping, and look at the President of the United States, and look at this one, and oh, and we're going to have a great time. I can see it's going to be a comedy hour up there. Nobody's ever preached that, and I'm sure I'll be off YouTube before the night's over, but uh, it's going to be fun up there. If the Lord's going to laugh, why can't I laugh? And uh, I, can, I can imagine that Jesus, I never saw a, a message about Jesus being a stand-up comedian. But can you imagine he's getting he up there? He does have a sense of humor. He does. Can you imagine Jesus getting up there and entertaining us and saying, now here's the president of, of Russia, and he thinks he's going to take over the world. And, ah, 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 and it goes on. And let me tell you this one here. There's a guy over in China, and it's going to be a fun time over there. So uh, Jesus is a stand-up comic. That's going to be blasphemy, I'm sure, in some people's minds. Forgive me, Lord. Let's have a little humor. Amen? You shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O oh, you, my strength. That's a poor translation, his strength. It should be, O oh, you, my strength. Wait for God. He is your strength. Wait for him. Don't get ahead of him. I want you to deliver me now from this situation, Lord. And he says, no, not now. When I say, not now. Why is he waiting? Only he knows. Amen. But I suspect that from now until the time he does deliver, he wants some faith exercised. He wants some growth exercised. And so I will wait for you, O oh, you, my strength. For God is my defense. And that word defense means you're my cliff. You are my very high tower. Amen. Get me up above this fray, Lord. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. He calls God his God of mercy. And mercy is one of my very favorite words in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And I love to get it done around here. The word is chesed, K-H-E-S-E-D. Chesed is a covenant love. It's a covenant love like you and I declared to each other eight mm -hmm. years ago in this sanctuary. By contract and covenant love, I promise to love and obey this woman and submit to her all the days of my... No, that's not, that's not how He's it goes. He's the easiest person to live with, trust me. Now, we made a covenant love to love each other. God has a covenant love with us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to wait for you. You're my strength. You're my defense. You're my love, my mercy. God shall let them, let me see my desire on my enemies. He's, he's going to give you the victory. Amen. Now, verses 11 to 13, Lord, demonstrate your justice. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. 
and for the cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath, consume them, that they may not be, and let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. So Lord, I don't want you to kill my enemies. <clears throat> That's too easy. They get out from under uh, the dependence they have to play here. Keep them around, Lord, and work them over. That's an interesting prayer, but the, isn't it? But the huh? funny thing is, though, that's so true because, you know, they say never forget. We hear that about the Holocaust. Um, then, you know, they kill themselves and you can't do anything. But people do tend to forget things. And it's really important. I think all through, a lot through Scripture, we hear the Lord telling us, remember, remember, remember. We always have to look back and remember. We have to remember what God does how he delivers us, and the tricks of the devil. That's right. And I, th I just, I, I, that really stands out to me in this whole psalm. Do not slay them lest my people forget. That's right. Don't slay them lest my people forget. And I want them not to forget either, those who are my enemies. <clears throat> Scatter them by your power. In other words, break their power and bring them down. That's a valid prayer. Even in the New Testament sense, that's a valid prayer. Lord, break the power of the enemy. Break the power of uh, these nations that are bring them exercising down. their power over others and bring them down. Bring them down. No harm in reading the paper, seeing what Russia is doing to Ukraine and say, Lord, stifle their efforts. Cause those weapons to be turned against them. Break that power. Uh, it's, it's great to be a, a, a sweet, loving Christian and we should pray for them, etc. But we also have justice. And God says that this sin You must have stop. to take, that's why people, I, my friend Diane used to say, why don't you just take the Old Testament and throw it away? Just pull it out, throw it out of the book. Because people would say, well, we just have to pray for them, you have to pray. I always say, God gave me a brain. I'm supposed to use the brain. I don't just pray and act like it's okay and do nothing about mm -hmm. it. That's, it's not okay someone does something to a child. Are we going to just pray for them and we'll forgive them? That's not what we do. We still need justice. So we have to couple that Old Testament and that New Testament and put it together and use your brain, That's right. Christians. That's right. And David had to do that as well. He was a man of prayer. This is a prayer in a song. But he also said, uh, stifle their efforts. Uh, don't kill them. Keep them around. Make them not uh, forget your hand. But the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them ever even be taken in their pride. That's the bottom line, that word pride. That word pride is describing the devil. Isaiah and Ezekiel tell us that he said, I will be like the Most High. I will set my throne on the farthest sides of the north. And uh, watch your pronouns. When you start getting agitated and you start using the word I, me, my, my. you could be walking down the road to pride. I'm not going to do this. I insist on that. Uh, when you start God, using, you say the Lord willing. <laughs> yeah, the Lord willing. <laughs> so be careful about that sin of pride. That, that's what it's all about. Uh, what's going on in the news, all the, the, uh, the rattling of the spears and what have you. It's all about pride. It's all about self, all about uh, conquest, power, etc. And uh, he goes on to say now, uh, uh, let them be taken in their pride and for the cursing and lying which they speak. Verse 13. Consume them in wrath, consume them, that they may not be, and let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. So again, he's talking about a national prayer here, and, uh, and even his enemies uh, coming against him, coming against his, his uh, future rulership. Uh, Lord, don't let that happen. And we can certainly pray that thing. We come against COVID. We come against viruses. Uh, we come against this and that and command it to leave this country. And uh, the, uh, the hatred and the racism and, the, and all the other isms that are so wicked uh, in, in humanity. Lord, bring it down. And so it's, when you look at the news, you know, one part of you wants to just flee and not look at the news. But the other part says, no, I want to be a part of it. And I want to be able to pray. God wants people who know what's going on and can pray to him to bring an end to that which is wrong. And again, another pause. He wants us to stop and think for a moment before we get down to that last stretch. In a typical David Psalm, that last stretch is, boom, all about praise. Verse 14. And at evening they return, they growl like a dog, and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food and howl if they are not satisfied. But here's where he moves into the praise. 
But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my defense, my God of mercy. So he's repeated that refrain again. And that becomes, we see that in verse 9 and 10. And in this song, he repeats it like a chorus. And this is where he wants us to leave this subject and all subjects. I will sing of your power. Oh, but that conversation between the China and Russia, I will sing of your power. But now it's BA5 and it's going to be BA6 for the COVID. I will sing of your power. And uh, so and so in my family is not talking to me. I will sing of your power. I don't care what it is. I will sing of your power. Watch your thinking. Be disciplined in your thinking. Don't let your imagination run wild. Give it to Sing the Lord. Of his, give it to the Lord. Concentrate on him. David was able to analyze his situation and realize, I've got problems. I've got enemies, etc. But I will praise the Lord. He is my deliverer. Yes, you're a realist. You know there are problems going on. But you're also an idealist in knowing that God is totally and completely in control and will deliver you. I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. Now, David at this point is, does not have many followers. He's going to get another year or two. He's going to have about 400 men, and then he'll have uh, 600 and 800. Then he's going to build quite a, fort, uh, a strong fortress of, of manpower. But he still has supporters at this point. Uh, he has Jonathan as his friend, and he probably has a few others around at this point. Do you think that David would sing about the Lord in front of others? I think so. He tells us to do it. Why wouldn't he do it? Do you think he sings in front of his nation when he's the king? Do you think he gets up there? Can you imagine any ruler in any country in the 196 nations in this world mm -hmm. today? Uh, and uh, now I'd like to say on behalf of my nation, I will bless thee, O Lord, I will bless... Can you imagine if a leader of a country were to do that? They would absolutely pan him as being totally Well, when he becomes nuts. king, doesn't Michal get mad at him? Well, that's what, when he brings in the Ark of the Covenant and he's dancing in the ephod, that's when she gets, she gets mad at him. He's dancing, remember? Yeah. He strips down to just the garb of the priest and the, the, the ephod, part. and he begins to dance, and uh, she says, you made a fool of yourself <laughs> with the young women, the young virgins. And he says, yes, you have seen nothing yet, and he begins to dance all the more. And God shuts her womb. She has no children from then on. So I will sing of your power. I will sing. My point is, why don't you sing in front of somebody else? But I wouldn't go into the restaurant, would I? I'm kind of a shy person, but can you imagine standing up in front of the restaurant and say, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. I will bless you, O Lord. And you begin to sing Dick about Garrity Jesus. Dick Garrity did that. He did. <laughs> he stood up on a stool. Bless his heart. On, on election day down at Jack's Restaurant and had a megaphone in Jack's Restaurant, the classiest restaurant in the area at that time, and began to proclaim the goodness <laughs> of the Lord. <laughs> bless him. And he went up to Saratoga. He was one of, you remember he, Jack? He was one of the founders you of remember our church. Jack? He had a... Uh, he had a uh, a megaphone, and he began to, at, at the opening day of the, the racetrack, began to proclaim Jesus. And then, of course, it built from there, and he went down to the Super Bowl in, I think it was New Orleans at that time, and it's just about the, the coin, coin cost, and these two big bruisers who are the captains of their football team go out there to flip heads and tails, and Dick goes out with his megaphone <laughs> to talk about Jesus, and the police come and take him and cart him away. So um, was that wrong? Well, we'll find out in heaven how God felt about that. Maybe, maybe God said, right on, buddy, right on. And probably David, King David high-fived David. He went to the Lord uh, earlier this year. In any event, uh, don't be afraid to uh, sing for the Lord. We don't know. No, don't, don't be afraid. We don't know. God's ways are higher than our ways. Why should I sing of his power? Why should I sing aloud of his mercy, his has said, his covenant love in the morning? For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. You deserve that, Lord. You deserve that. You have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my defense, my God of mercy. Look at those words, and I'm going to just read the words and see, is this worthy of God, and is it worth praising Him? Amen. Look at verse 16. Power, mercy, defense, Refuge, wow. strength, wow. defense, 
Wow. Mercy. Wow. Beautiful. You write those on a piece of paper or write them in your mind Beautiful. and say them over and over again. And you're in the midst of fear and you're in the midst of anger and you're in the midst of consternation. Wow. And suddenly you start saying power, mercy, defense, refuge, strength, defense, mercy. And you say it over and over That's and over again. That's a beautiful prayer for people to pray. How about that? Over and over again. For all my COVID people that have been sick and all my shot people that have been sick, say every day, say, Lord, you, I, but I will sing of your power. Lord, you are powerful. You can heal me. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. You're full of mer mercy, Lord. I know you can do anything. For you have been my defense. You are my defense. You're keeping me alive, Lord. And you are my continued defense. And you're my refuge in the day of my trouble. This is trouble for me, Lord. I'm sick, I have problems, but you can deliver me. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my defense. You are my defense, God. You are my God, the God of mercy. Lord, deliver me, heal me, strengthen me. Say those words, pray those prayers. Doesn't take that long. God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care who you are, what you've done. He loves you and he will bless you and he will deliver us. Amen. I'm not going to be a chicken anymore. I'm going to be an eagle. eagle. I'm going to fly high and see God's greatness and goodness. Let's pray, shall we? Amen. Gracious Father, thank you so much for this word that you've given to us today. Help us to remember to give it out to others and to practice it in our own lives. We ask you to bless everyone that's listened tonight and all those who will listen to this message. May they be strengthened, delivered, and healed through these words in your holy scriptures, Father. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen and amen. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out.